Hey everybody, Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome to Guided Listening. So this week we're going to listen to an incredible composition and performance, Blue Train, off the Blue Train album by John Coltrane, the only Blue Note album he actually did. And, um, you know, maybe... You know, maybe not one of the most important albums in a sort of creative or career-defining way or changing the music kind of way, but man, like as far as an artistic statement, and he wrote most of the tunes, and you know, it's it's incredible. There's some wonderful playing coming up here. Um, as always, I want to invite you into Jazzwire. We've got a lot of new members from around the world recently, and you're going to be hearing a lot more about Jazzwire. I'll just kind of put it out there like that in upcoming months, and uh, now would be a great time to be jumping in and joining us. You've been hearing about it for so long. Take the free trial. Come on in. Let's get your playing moving. And I'm talking about people at the semi-pro level. If you're out playing gigs and getting a little stale, yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay, and I love your comments. Please leave comments. Each week, uh, there may be 20, 30, 50, 80 comments on these videos between Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, and of course, Inside Jazzwire. Um, and, and I like the off-color comments too. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, there's a particular guy, Alan, I'm talking to you, on Facebook. And uh, like every third or fourth video, he uh, makes a comment. He's very angry at me about whatever my premise was. Um, he thoroughly disagrees, and then he gives me like a lot of crap for talking over the video. <sighs> Alan, it's called guided listening. That's the guided part. But I know you love it when I don't talk, so this is for you. Okay, so let's get into listening to some Coltrane here. There is so much going on with this incredible band. It's uh, players from the Miles Davis Association, so we have... Uh, we have uh, Paul Chambers on the bass. We have Philly Joe Jones on drums, Kenny Drew on piano, and then three incredible horn players, Coltrane, of course, Lee Morgan, and Curtis Fuller on trombone. First thing I want to ask, now it's a blues. Blue Train is a blues. First thing I want to ask you, is it a minor blues or a major blues? It's a tricky question because the melody has a minor sound, yet the soloing is over we don't call it a major blues, but a traditional dominant blues. So it's, it's for all the world, it's a minor sound, but then the soloing is not that. So a lot of people get that wrong. I've heard people do that. They'll, they'll play the song and they'll solo over minor blues. No, 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 no. Bag's Groove is one of those. Bag's Groove uh, by Milt Jackson, Miles Davis. has a, It's a minor, it's a totally straight up minor melody, but then the soloing is over regular dominant blues. Song for My Father is a minor melody, ah, but it's played over minor chord changes. So we have to be kind of straight on that. So th that's one of the first little tips to listen for is how it's a very strong minor tonality, but then shifts into regular blues. Here we go. So first of all, listen to the call and response. The horns in unison say, that, and then bass, drums, piano. So already, interesting structure, but traditional call and response. Ah, so it's the same call, but it's now it's harmonized. And it really does sound minor, doesn't it? A little more major there. Minor. So lovely voicings, but it's setting up this dark minor sound, right? Here's soloing. Train starts a little darker, minor. And there it is, there's our major third. So now we hear it's like, ooh, the sun kind of came out. It's cool how we started in that minor zone and then transition. Coltrane solo on this. Jeez Louise. That sound, the buoyancy, Man, I don't have the words to talk about it. Now, I will say, there's a lot of language in here that he's using and reusing. So, we have a sense of what he was practicing during this time. When you hear him playing a line a lot of times, he comes back to it. Yeah, it's what he was thinking about. And check out Billy Joe there. He's hinting at double time. 
So the paces stayed the same, the changes stayed the same, the bass, Paul Chambers, has stayed the same, but Billy Joe, he's thinking, Especially, he's doubled up his hi-hat. This will happen again, we'll talk more about it. But he's hinting at double time. No one else is. Train's playing double time, though. And now, do you hear how that kind of release? That was Philly Joe going back to regular time. Now, we have the other two horns playing this great background, right? Background again. There's a lot of arrangement going on in here. It's very cool. There's harmony parts, there's backgrounds, there's call and response, there's double time. It's a lot for a regular blues. That ba da da we hear Train do that a ton. There's more coming up of that. He's probably played that idea 20 times already. Those are arpeggio things. Oh, I thought it was coming up. Yeah, so that line, listen back when I'm not talking for those ideas that Train keeps coming back to and using. Speaking of coming back to, Lee just played something, he played it a second time. So he's using call and response in his own plan. Woo! Yeah, sassy. Do you hear those short notes? how articulated he's playing and how much he's snapping notes off. Snapping notes off and using space. And here's the double time thing again with Philly Joe. So he's changing his ride pattern from dang, dang, da dang to dang, 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 dang. He's making it tighter and giving the hint that he's going twice as fast. His hi-hat, instead of being on two and four, is twice as fast on all the upbeats. Yet, the comping and the bass playing stays the same. It's a really cool, atypical feel. And now, Billy Joe came out of it, back to single time, right? And Lee Morgan playing some great bluesy stuff, like blues scale, minor pentatonic bluesy stuff, that he's mixing in with all the amazing bebop vocabulary. So it's both at the same time. Amazing. So Lee ended with that. Curtis started with the same idea. Listening, listening. That is so swinging. Oh my god. Whew. Little shuffle. That was a funny little clever thing to put in there from Paul Chambers, but. when he went, when he brought that hi-hat in a beat, or rather a bar early. So here's the double time feel. And when that's happening behind you as the horn player, it's compelling you to play some double time. You don't have to though. And so that, this stuff, Curtis isn't playing a million notes, but he is playing with a double time feel. He was playing shorter, snappier things. So, pretty smart. You know, if you don't have all of Coltrane's technique and he's playing trombone, which is a harder instrument to get around on, 
he had a way to play double time or to connect with the double time feel without literally playing 16 or 20 notes in every measure. Smart, 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 smart. And the background again. So we've had three solos, all of which go into the implied double time and all of which have backgrounds behind them. So seems like it's a bit of a plan they had. bluesy uh, piano lines with dyads, you know, two notes at the same time. So there's all sorts of single lines, little two, you know, uh, two note harmony things. Have we heard any block chords yet? I don't think so. So there's great comping going on, sort of pushing his melody ahead. Again, so those snappy articulations that make this really, really swing. We heard it from Lee Morgan, we're hearing it from Kenny Drew. And there's our double time, right? Notice, so Kenny's going back and forth between single time and double time. Double time. Double time. Double time. Okay, but he's in double time now. He was toying around between the two to begin with. But again, it's not true double time because the bass isn't walking. The bass is still the same pace he's been playing all along. So many great lines that Kenny Drew's playing. Shift back to regular time. So are we gonna have a background behind the piano? I wonder. The horn's gonna play that background. No. So they did it three times. Why didn't they do it the fourth time? My thought is the piano is a softer instrument. Having three horns come in, it's just gonna cover up the piano. Let's stay out of the way. Great decision, great orchestration. Bass solo. Listen to the piano combo. There is none. That is a decision. Again, um, changing the texture to just a duo, bass and drums. It's so effective, right? The piano comping would be fine, but it can get in the way. Oh, okay, so a short solo, no double time stuff, no backgrounds, no comping. Here's our unison melody. And typically blues melodies get played twice. So no surprise, there it is again. But how Coltrane develops it with harmony and the three horns. Interesting that of those three horns, I'm pretty sure Coltrane is playing the melody line. And why did I say it's interesting Coltrane was playing the melody line? It's his album, right? And yeah, but you know, lots of times just the way the, the timbre and the nature of the trumpet is, is very often it would get the melody line and the trumpet might be the next voice down. Sorry, trumpet, tenor sax, next voice down, uh, and then the trombone. But so, cool. Coltrane put himself on top and had Lee Morgan playing pretty low on the instrument underneath him. Worked great. All right. Wow. So, uh, you know, Alan does have a point, I guess, that uh, listening to that without me talking is uh, absolutely worthwhile. <laughs> but I hope you found that little tour worthwhile, too, and especially that very cool thing of the uh, implied double time that kept being brought in. Now, the whole album sounds very well rehearsed. They kind of know what they're doing. And uh, I was reading a little bit about it, and apparently this was sort of a rare situation, or at least for Coltrane. Lots of record labels, you just come in and record. Like, here's, here's your band, 
shake hands and they'll hand out the music and now let's record. So they actually got a day or two or however long of rehearsal time. I guess Blue Note sort of provided that. So the album really does sound tight and, you know, Coltrane brought in parts and arrangements and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really a, a wonderful album. You have to have it. Um, every jazz player in their uh, college dorm room has that album cover hanging, you know, the poster. I know I did. Uh, so yeah, it's a good one. And I want to let you know, inside Jazzwire this week, um, we have three different songs we're working on. And, that, and that's how we do the pedagogy inside Jazzwire. Everything is always based on the music. Yes, there are etudes, and yes, there are exercises on articulation, and yes, we talk about drumming on whatever, but, um, but it's all based on the music. Why not? We're playing the music, right? So why spend time doing something that's about music? How about if we do music? So in the green community, the more novice level, we're talking about Sonny Rollins and uh, Sunny Moon for Two, that great blues. It's another great example of a minor blues melody that becomes a major sort of dominant blues. How do you, how do, you do that? We're talking about it. In the red community, the intermediate, intermediate community, we're talking about Half Nelson, the great Miles Davis bebop tunes. Got a lot of intricate things in the melody and definitely inside the chord changes, talking about that. In the blue community, the uh, more advanced community, we're playing the really cool, uber quirky Thelonious Monk tune played twice and digging into rhythmic displacement, especially. So if that sounds interesting, take the free trial. Come check out the lessons. Check them out, 30 days, free. And uh, I think you'll see that what we do, how we do it, and most especially the community where you get your energy, where you get inspired, where you wanna come back after a long day of work to get with your instrument and do some playing, how hard that is for all of us, it's easier when you have a community around you. That's why we do it that way at Jazzwire. I hope I'll see you there, and I will see you next week for Guided Listening. Have a great one.